chapter 38. Then Shephatiah, the son of Matin, and Gadatha, Gadatha, the son of Pasher, and Jukal, the son of Shemaniah, and Pasher, the son of Machiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Jeremiah is still, he's still preaching, he's still proclaiming the words, even though he's in jail. Thus saith the Lord, he that remains in the city shall die by the sword. And this is Jeremiah saying, by the famine and by the pestilence. There's been the sword, the famine, and the pestilence all the way through this message. So in chapter 1, but he that goes forth to the Chaldeans shall live. And to the nation of Israel, this sounds like treason. Go off to the enemy. They're outside the camp. They're outside of Jerusalem. They're in Judah. They're attacking a city. And the orders are from God, go join them. Don't, don't stay in the land. Don't fight for the land. I'm not going to protect you. Fall yourselves to the enemy. That's life. For he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. The only thing you're going to have out of this is just your soul. That's it. Thus saith the Lord, the city sh shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. And then we read that in chapter 21. Uh, uh, 21.10 is going to be 32, chapter 3 we read. Jerusalem is going to be desolate, as God says. It's going to be gone going to be destroyed and if you stay so will you therefore the princess said unto the king we beseech thee let this man Jeremiah be put to death for thus he weakens the hands of the men of the war that remain in this city well you are supposed to remain in this city by God and the hands of all the people and speaking such words unto them for this man seeketh not the welfare of the people, but the hurt. Uh, it's coming from God. What Jeremiah has said has already come to pass and is coming to pass. The hurt is if you guys stay in the land. The princes are doing the hurt for the people. They want Jeremiah to shut up. They want to shut him up. They've already tried to shut him up in prison. And it's not stopping them. The gospel message that Jeremiah is preaching is go with the enemy. And they're fighting it. The gospel message today is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they're fighting it. They always fight against what God says. Now had God not said go to the enemy, but stay in Jerusalem, it would be completely opposite. It always seems what God tells man, man doesn't believe. I'm personally 85% assured it's not Bible, but I would, I would believe by how Satan works that in the tribulation period, the false prophets... The false preachers will be preaching salvation by nothing but the blood of Jesus. You say, well, what's wrong with that? In the tribulation period, it's by works and the blood. Today, it's the blood of Jesus Christ, nothing else. And they preach works. And they preach baptism. And they preach church attendance. And they preach church uh, belonging. They This church over that church. Anything but the blood. I have a feeling in the tribulation period they're going to switch it. It's going to be nothing but the blood. Don't worry about going to the temple. That's, that's for the Jews. The welfare of the people is they obey God. And the princes don't want the people to do that. Why? Because they got authority in Jerusalem. They've got a seat. they got a home. Why would they even think about going off to an enemy territory being put under... Uh, the bondage and putting under what kind of house am I going to have? You mean I'm not going to be a prince no more? I'm going to be a servant? I don't want that. I like the position over the people. 
And this Jeremiah, this one guy, has ruined the whole thing. Hopefully tomorrow we'll make it to, to going to preach on the street. And everybody's going to be buying and selling, and one person's going to upset them all. Preaching the gospel. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand. Great king. For the king is not he that can do anything against you. Oh, you mean the princes have more authority than the king? Well, he's a puppet kingdom anyway. He just said, I ain't got no power over you guys. He's the king. You know, monarchs, unlike this one, if they were to rule, you know, there are several kings that, you know, they butchered their wives to death, cut their heads off. Why? Because the king said so. And there was no questioning the king. What the king said was the order. When the king declared, take Haman and hang him on his, on his gallows, that's it. Haman hanged. When the king held out his golden scepter, if, if you didn't touch it, Esther said, if he didn't put it out for you to, to reach out and touch it, you were dead. So if he didn't put his thing out for you to touch the scepter, you were dead. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's not like the presidency. It's not having the Senate. It's not having the House. And we can't declare a war because the House did not approve it. That wasn't it. The king says, mount up the army and go. You mounted up and you went. Read the life of the kings in the Bible. Saul ordered the priests of the Lord to be killed. Israel backed off, but one guy stood in there, Doag, I think his name was, something like that. He stepped in and said, okay, I'll do it, king. That's your order. Sometimes I wonder if, if Bathsheba really had a chance. But then again, if, if she didn't have a chance, it would be her life over morals. David was the king. Nathan steps in, thou art the man. David should have said, thou art losing your head. David had all right the king. This king, Zedekiah... You guys have more power than I. Yeah, that's the President of the United States. It's Congress' fault. You guys tell me what to do. The media tells me what to do. I sure don't want to go. Listen, I'm guaranteed the President of the United States, when he makes a decision, he has a guy that stands behind him in secret. What's the media going to do? What will they print tomorrow's newspaper if I do that? The media is what's running America, not the President. He does something wrong, and the, the media will crucify him. The media has caused the downfall of many people. Strong. Then they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malachiah, the son of Hamelech. This is not the same guy that he was in. If you remember back in chapter 37, verse 15, wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him, and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe. And this is described as when Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon. And into the cabins. This guy describes prison. He had a dungeon and all that. And here's another guy. In chapter 38. Into the dungeon of Malchiah the son of Himelech. This, this guy. He has his own dungeon. That was in the court of the prison. Inside the prison. Here are two prisons that have dungeons in them and cabins. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. So this is kind of a pit. Maybe an old water hole that kind of dried up. Just enough to have yik at the bottom. Gunk. Gooey mud. I remember one time I was running around playing with a friend. And, uh, we were playing in this open field and just had destroyed this whole housing unit. They are going to build a, a medical center and stuff like that. And I was just running along. Next thing you know, I just sunk up to my knees. I didn't know what happened. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm four or eight, wherever I was at that time. And I'm coming down to three, two. Just sunk right down. And you can't do nothing. I had to be pulled out by my friend. 
this is what's going on with Jeremiah. It doesn't tell us how much he sinks, but he's sinking in the mire. So, kind of way, Jeremiah has uh, his legs in, in bondage by the mud and, and the gook. Now, when Abed Amela, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. The king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin. That's where Jeremiah was running from. Chapter 37. Verse number 12. And Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem in, to go into the land of Benjamin. In verse 13, when he was come to the gate of Benjamin. This is where Jeremiah takes over wants to get away. Ebed-Melech, he knows his name, went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, here's a guy who's under the authority of the king. He's heard about Jeremiah. And the only concern he has about Jeremiah that we're told is that he's sinking in the mire. We don't hear anything about what was God's message. Now, God will have a message for this gentleman later on. My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet. So he recognizes Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And the king doesn't know anything like this. You know, the king didn't know what they had against Daniel. The king had no idea that those gallows were being built. The king had no idea what his dreams were. The king had no idea that his, his his city called Egypt was going to be destroyed. Pharaoh had no idea who he was standing in front of. Um, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is. Well, look at verse 21 to 37. The same king. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah to the court of the prison, that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the Baker Street, to all the bread in the city was spent. And now he is in a place there is no bread. Where it, where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Thirty seven twenty one. Jeremiah can't defend for himself. There's no more food. Weakness from famine of food, weakness of thirst is going to kill Jeremiah. Then the king commanded Abimelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee. Well, why thirty men? You can't find good six, seven men to pull, to pull Jeremiah up? No, the princes. The king feared his own princes. That you got to take 30 men to go rescue Jeremiah. Now you need, it's not like Jeremiah was so fat that you needed 30 men to pull him out of a hole. It's not the case. With thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon. Oh, the king recognized him as a prophet. And he allows, knowing he's a prophet, allows the men to do what they've done to him. Out of the dungeon before he died. So Abimelech, e you know his name, took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took their old cast cloths and old rotten rags. Now why that's in there, I don't know. Why he didn't go get ropes, I don't know. He didn't have ropes. I have no idea. Why? What is the illustration here? What is God trying to tell us by the old cast cloths and the old rotten rag? Well, I know one one place it says in Isaiah that our our righteousness is filthy rags. But other than that, there's a message here. I don't know what it is. Maybe some preachers preached it and God's enlightened them. But if you were to, if you were to ask me, okay, I'm gonna go rescue somebody out of a pit. 
man, I'm going to think chains or ropes. But if this is all they had, are you trying to tell me that maybe, ne maybe, is it that Nebuchadnezzar came and took everything? Even the ropes so you don't hang any of my, my army, my men, my commandos? Let down the cord into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed Malek, the, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, Put now these old cast cloths in rotten rags under thine armholes under the cord. Why would he have to say that, would you think? Why would you think to hear, hey, take these things and put them in your armhole? What, what would you think? That Jeremiah would already know to do something like that. Because it's probably so dark that Jeremiah doesn't even know what's happening. And Jeremiah, we're dropping some stuff down to you. Grab them and put them underneath your armpits. Rotten rags under thy armholes, under the cords. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Well, that tells you what the dungeons are. Now that's not the, the dungeons in the Bible is not the dungeons you find in, in the wicked uh, witchcraft and magic computer games. Like I said, if you were to ask me, and I don't know much, looks like to me an old water well. Maybe the old water well that was actually in the prison where the prisoner would gather their own water. Maybe there was a time in this prison that they had, you know, you guys wanted water there to get it yourself. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah. Look at this guy. He allows the princes to take hold of him. Now he, he, he brings Jeremiah to him, the prophet, unto him. Into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. He, he calls Jeremiah out of prison to go with the church. Come in the house of the Lord. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing. Hide nothing from me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, king. You're the one that allowed those guys to throw me in that dungeon. Jeremiah shows no bitterness. Then, then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it unto thee, will thou not show he put me to death? Now, this is not bitterness. He's saying, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Your, your people don't like it. When I tell you, you're going to put me to death for God's word? And I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? You're not going to listen to me. Jeremiah chapter 37, he, he's, he's leaving. He, he's, he's giving up. And he's, he's got the king. He's talking face to face to the king. He could say anything he wanted. He said, you know what? You're not going to listen to me. Are you going to put me to death? Your cabinet, whatever you want to call them, the princes, they want me dead. I'm going to tell you the same thing that got them angry. So Zedekiah the king swears secretly. Oh, secret society kind of thing unto Jeremiah. He's hiding from the princes. Princes. What a king. Saying... As the Lord liveth, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E. Are you really going to believe Zedekiah? Zedekiah, here's a Bible. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Would you believe this guy in the courtroom? Then we over here. Chapter 37, verse 1. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned in the stead of Kaniah. Verse 2. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spanked by the prophet Jeremiah. So you think, really, thus saith, you know, the Lord here, as the Lord liveth. You really going to believe this guy? Even Jeremiah knows it's just words that made us this soul. Also, even a backslider, even a wicked king said, you know what, it wasn't evolution. I don't believe in God, but he made me. I will not put thee to death. Neither will I give thee into the hand of these men, 38.5, that seek thy life. 
These princes want Jeremiah dead, the king just told him. That's why they put him in the dungeon, to die. Then said Jeremiah to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, you know, who the God is, if thou wilt surely go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, well, he mentioned the word princes, leave your princess for his princess, 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 then thy soul shall live. He wants the king, here's, here's a word, ready? He wants the king to surrender. Ooh. White handkerchief. White flag. You know what that would do? That would break. That would destroy your pride. Then thy soul shall live. What is the gospel message, Jeremiah? Surrender to live to the enemy. And this city shall not be burned with fire. There's hope. But what happens by Jeremiah 52? It becomes hopeless. And thou shalt live in thy house. But if, look at that, but if, they go with the but if, thou will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. And they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand. And this is what happens. Zedekiah does a but if. And Zedekiah the king said in Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans. So there are Jews that did go. They obeyed Jeremiah. Maybe they obeyed Jeremiah or just out of fear they, they, they went, to, but they went. At least they delivered me into their hand and they mocked me. Zedekiah is a spineless, weak jellyfish. They're going to call me names. Suck your thumb, change your pants. Put on a new diaper and be a king. Now, he's afraid of what the people are going to say. That's why he gave over to the prince, prince in chapter 4. If he were to defend Jeremiah the prophet, oh, they might say something about him. You know, Pilate was the same way. He was a people pleaser. Last few presidents we have been people pleasers. Media pleasers. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I, which I speak unto thee. Jeremiah's getting a little hope back. So it shall be well unto thee that thy soul shall live. Yeah. Well, he just does the evil. Like I said, he's a puppet king set in by, by Nebuchadnezzar's army. This guy, he doesn't want the job. He wants the power. He, he you know, he, he's afraid of being mocked. I'm the king, but I have no power. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. The women that are in your house are going to be in the Babylonian royalty. Just not Jewish royalty. Is that what you want, king? Is that what you want for your women? You're so concerned about the people? You can do right and have your Jewish woman be under Jewish ruler. If that's what you, I mean, you really want to do right. But if you don't, they're going to be under Babylonian. 
It's going to be mixed marriages. And those women shall say, Thy friends have set thee on, and have pre prevailed against thee, that they that thy feet are sunk in the mire. Remember where, they, remember you, where you were told I was, king? And they are turned away back. King, they're going to make fun of you if you don't do what God tells you to do. Man, if you do what God tells you to do, they're going to love you. Because they'll be in their homes. They'll be with their husbands. They'll be with their children. They'll be in the position of authority. If you don't do what God tells you to do, you're going to break it all apart. And you know what the Babylonians are going to do? They're going to come and break it all apart. You realize Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo were of the king's seed? Do you know what it takes to become a eunuch? This goes as this goes as Mr. Bruce about being a eunuch. That's exactly what they do to eunuchs. And science still tells you you're a male. But they didn't put dresses on. So they shall bring out all thy wives. Must have been a Mormon. And thy children to the Chaldeans. And you know those children. Jeremiah 39, 6 and Jeremiah 41, 10. And thou shalt not escape out of their hand, but thou shalt be taken by the hand of the, of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause this city to be burned with fire. Look who the blame is laid on. And what's he had to do? Verse 17. Surrender. This King Zedekiah, he is quaking in his boots. He has soiled and wet underwear, I guarantee by now. He's probably sweat a gallon of, of, of sweat on each arm. Why? Because what's going to happen to the people? What's going to happen to the to the land? No. They're going to mock me. They're going to make fun of me. You got to ask yourself, why does he just step out right now? He, he leaves Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yes, sir. Yes, King. I got something. To, uh, Jeremiah, will you do me a favor? What? How about this? How about we change the whole Bible? This is what God told you to say. Yeah. So far, everything has happened what you've said, Jeremiah. Yeah. If I go out to surrender the King, will you do me one favor? What's that? Will you go with me? Uh, you don't have to hold the white flag, the white handkerchief. I will hold it. Will you just walk with me to, to the to the army up there, to, to the commander of the army? And will you pray as we go out there for God's will to be done? How about that? Because you say, if I go out there, I'm going to live, right? Yeah. So I have no fear of dying if I were to step out and do what God wanted me to do. But he fears the people. Well, Mr. King, aren't you in charge? Anybody who makes fun of you, anybody who goes against God's word, Jeremiah's preaching, why don't you have them executed? The law said you could if they mocked God. Why don't you step out there to the army and say, here I am by the word of the God, by Jeremiah's pre preaching about my God, says I come out here to surrender you. I place my hands in your hands, Babylon, in the name of God my Father and, and the God of Israel and the God of hosts. I'm in God's hands, but I, I come to you like God wanted me to do. And then you realize Ezra and Nehemiah would not have to rebuild. There would have been no e Ezra and Nehemiah. They would have been back in Jerusalem, born. 
Jeremiah, I mean, uh, Daniel never had to go into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would never have to have that image to fall down and worship. And we would probably be still living today in 2015 where we could say, ah, instead of the dumb of the rock, there is the temple that Solomon built. Don't you think so? Because Zedekiah feared the people. You go over there today, you get your tickets, and you go over to the, 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 the Holy Land, and you stand over there, and you look at that, that mountain where, where, where God said, I'll place my name. You look up there, and you take your little camera, and you take your little selfie, and there's a picture of a dumb of a rock of Muslims and not God the Father. Why? Why? Zedekiah, if you don't do what God tells you to do, this area is going to be burned. Solomon's temple was destroyed because of Zedekiah. Now let me ask you something. Is Jesus a liar? Is he a liar? Didn't Jesus say, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away? So recorded in history, in our Bible, for all eternity, you're going to have to turn to Jeremiah 38 and read why this city was destroyed, Zedekiah. I don't know. You think that would bring a little chuckle in heaven? <laughs> it was all destroyed because Zedekiah did not listen to Jeremiah. Wow. Yeah, you imagine Jeremiah walking up there reading this fact. What you guys read? Oh, that's my book. Yeah, you won't believe that king, man. He was so afraid of the people, man. I, I shook his hand. It was, I, I wish I had a sponge. That guy was so afraid of what the people thought. And here we are still in eternity talking about this idiot, what he did and what he didn't do. Imagine one day the Lord, I don't know what's going to go on in heaven. I don't know if we're going to have messages and stuff like that, but I hope we have Bible learning. I hope we would have Jesus Christ as our forever Sunday school teacher. Okay, class, open up your Bibles. Let's open to Jeremiah 38 today. Let's talk about a king who was an idiot. And somehow, in television, <laughs> television, heaven of vision, whatever God, whatever God will do that, you know, the, the devil has everything that, that counterfeits what God has. So hell of vision has to be something weird, you know. You imagine somehow God just plays it all out for us to see what went on. Wouldn't it be great if we could see actual see actually see real pictures of what Solomon's temple looked like? You imagine God, God up there and have Solomon? Come here. See this? This is before. This is what you built. And because you're all your wives and all your, your your gods and all that that you serve that you serve after, and then showing what, what the temple looked like in Jeremiah's time, you know what it looked like, don't you? Jeremiah's already told you. you walk up to the temple and there were all kinds of worshiping images and pathetic symbols and and all kinds of, of, of altars. At one point, even the, even the, the brazen uh, labor was pushed off to the side. The gold has been torn down off the doors to pay for armies. Zedekiah, if you do right, you'll be spared. And thou shalt not escape the hand, but thou shalt be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause this city to be burned with fire. Then said Zedekiah to Jeremiah, I repent, I am sorry, oh man, Then says Zedekiah, the wimp, let no man know of these words. Why? They are words of life. Haven't we as, as a family, haven't we stood and, and preached the word of God? Hasn't somebody gone, don't tell anybody. That's not what you're supposed to say. You turn it off from people. People won't get saved by words. That's a Zedekiah. You're no worse than that kid I turned around the corner and no, no threat to the kid. You, you need a change. Let no man know of these words, and thou shalt. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back again. Go back again. He says, 
Verse 16, Zedekiah the king swore, swore sweet unto Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made us this, this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. And he just said, If you shut up, I won't kill you. He's already backed up on his promise and oath to God. That right there said, if you keep on preaching, I'm going to kill you. Remember I told you you couldn't trust him? He was hoping Jeremiah had a nice little friendly kind of message. He, he would have a, a, uh, a swagger kind of message, a, a Graham kind of message for the rulers and playing golf. With. He thought... Being in the king's presence, he would change his tone, change the message, as many preachers do. Mr. Preacher, yes, I like to come to your church. Oh, good. What are you? I am a vascular surgeon. Ooh, big money. God is love. Rainbows are for sodomites. We're all going to heaven. Vascular surgeon doesn't need to hear about blood. He sees enough blood. And Jeremiah, man of God, did not change. You imagine what the king is the thing about you know I like to read think about what the king was wearing and what Jeremiah was wearing. He just pulled out of the mud. Probably still had a cake on his shoes. Or his feet. Maybe he lost his slippers or his sandals. But if the princes here that I have talked with, he, see he's afraid. These princes have power over the king. And like Tracy said, the king was just put in by Babylon. And they come unto thee and say unto thee, Declare unto us now what thou hast said to the king. Hide it not from us, and we will not put thee to the... Really, we're going to really believe this one when they say it. Also what the king said unto thee. And then thou shalt say unto them, and this is a lie, I present my supplication before the king that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Well, we come a long way in Jonathan's, haven't we? Remember the first Jonathan in the Bible? A lover of David who sought God? Did Jonathan become a man who's, who's known for a house's death in prison? Then came all the princes to, unto Jeremiah and asked him. And he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded him. Jeremiah lied. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not received. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day Jerusalem was taken. This is the third time that Babylon's coming, and the last time. And he was there when Jerusalem was taken. And again, like I said last night, he's in there for protection for, from the army. Why is there? You don't get accidentally killed. Everybody else. I mean, how would you like to have a, a Zedekiah as your president in charge? The guy's a wimp. He's a liar. Oh, that's, there's your American. The sorry state that we're running into as we come to the close of Jeremiah. The king is a mouse. And if you were to say that in Jerusalem, if you were to say on the street, the king is a mouse, the other car is a mouse, you know a mouse would come out of his hole, come up and smack you in the face with an insult? How dare you call that guy a mouse and ruin the reputation of us mice? We just want a piece of cheese and live. That guy, I don't know what that guy wants, but true. That's an insult to mice. 
And we have seen people in this chapter swear by God and it didn't mean nothing at all. And that's where we are in today. We have seen people in churches, in pulpits, pray to God in the name of God the Father and Jesus Christ. Amen. And it don't mean nothing. And if they could, the man that is really of God, I guarantee there are churches, and listen, I know, with the church that we attend, all the battles and fights that go on behind the scenes to try to stop us from preaching the gospel. I know a guy who cops told him, listen, you know, if, we, if we could, we'd shut you up. I had a cop tell me, he says, I don't care what the Constitution says. If I was told to arrest you, I'd arrest you personally and enjoy it. And those are people in authority, just like these princes. They know what the law says. But we still want Jeremiah dead. We want the man of God that's preaching the truth. We want him dead. So don't be surprised if they get upset because you won't bake a cake. Don't be surprised if they get upset because you won't give them a license. Don't be upset if they put you in jail. Don't be upset if they try to put you into a classes and they'll be more friendly and all that like they did with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. And then go in Daniel chapter 1. Don't be surprised that they find you everything they can. Don't be surprised that they take everything you have. Because you are living in the shoes of the prophets of Jeremiah. We are coming to the last day. How long? I don't know. But there'll probably be a day. The Jeremiah's will be in America. They'll be far and few. I guarantee you let this generation of Christians today, that are in the churches today, you let them grow up to be adults and head of the church, what do you think you're going to have? You got Sunday school lessons today. I don't even have Bible story. They got other little kitty little stories and pirates and witches and all other kinds of crap. Yes, I said crap. Dung. You stop every Baptist church in America, every Baptist church in the world. Stop and ask every Sunday school teacher five basic questions about five groups of people in the Bible. I bet you they couldn't even answer the question. Well, I bet you they can answer other questions and other things. I bet you they probably couldn't name the disciple of Jesus Christ. Just one. Imagine, hey, you imagine having a church, St. John. All right, name me one apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, mm. Patch? No. Sleepy Doc? Uh, no. We're not in the generation of Jeremiah, but we're heading there. I would hate to be a I would hate to be the generation of Christians that are in nursery of churches today, and wait for them to go through everything, all the changes, all the things that ch their churches are doing today, and for them, the ones that are in the nursery right now, the cribs and all that, and playing, all the services being, I mean, they're young and all that, but go through all the junk that their churches are teaching today. I would hate to be around when they are in the leadership of the church as pastors and deacons. You think the church is a mess now? You wait today, become in charge if the Lord tarries. 